thinking how it is and how important it is to trust God in every circumstance. And sometimes we say we trust God, but we really don't. We said we say we'll trust God in church, but when comes Monday, we worry and we fret. So he's saying today, just to trust me. He's like, I got you. My promises are yea and amen. And he's saying that he is God. And all you have to do is trust him. Um, and, and to my original thought, oh, shut up. Oh, Lord God, build our trust in you today. Build our hope in you. Where we're lacking in faith and where we're lacking in trust, show us the many circumstances of our lives where you can be trusted, God. Give us, give us instances where you can be trusted, Lord God. I, I praise you and I thank you for building our trust and our faith in you. In the name of Jesus, amen. So guys, uh, like I said, my sermon today is called, Who Calls You Thomas? Um, as many of you may know, um, uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes, who is, who is a mighty man in the kingdom, he's, um, he, he's what I call a general in the kingdom. We don't have many generals in the kingdom anymore. What I mean is uh, when he speaks um, it kind of commands but commands in a very powerful and gentle way. Um, he's one of the uh, generals in the kingdom and he's he's a preacher. He's from I think it's West Virginia and he has a global ministry called Potter's House. And it is so global, his ministry. He's been all, all around the world. And he is very, very well known, not only in Christendom, but for businesses and for, for business people and business leaders and all those other stuff. All that other stuff. And all of these leaders um look up to him like like um Paula White Kane called him her father. Um Cheryl Brady says um he's he was a voice in her life. Stephen Furtick and countless other leaders and other people in the faith and people in business look up to him too. Um because he's a wonderful business leader as well. Um, people in the arts and entertainment industry, Tyler Perry, um, Devon Franklin, they all they all uh, look up to him and aspire to this great man of God. And you all would all hear hear them talk about him fondly. You would hear preachers interview him and ju they just are in awe of him and I am in awe of him myself as a preacher uh, as an up and coming uh, preacher myself I am in awe of him he's so wise and so full of wisdom um, but I was in my bed um, uh, a about a year or two back and I thought with all of these leaders and all of these um, when you are leading leaders or when you are um, when you are looked up to by the world um, not only um, by Christendom or by business but um, by the arts community uh, what when do you like and I and I began to think when does he just get to be uh, 
Thomas Dexter Jakes instead of Bishop T.D. Jakes. And and my mind went to um, just ordinary people. Like, not ordinary people, because he's an ordinary person. But just the run of the mill, everyday person. And I began to think of the personas we present. Especially if you're someone in leadership or someone uh, high profile. When do you just get to be yourself? Um, and the Lord said to me, you need someone in your life who will just let you be you. Who will just let you just be um not your title, not your persona, but just you. And I was like, oh, wow. He, it, it's like almost he was saying, we put so much standards on people and what they do and who, and we forget about who they are. We, we remember the preacher, the business leader, the artist, the mom, the, you know, whatever you do, but we kind of forget about the person and we look at the persona, but forget that there is a person behind that persona. We look at these celebrities, like whoever celebrity you could think of, and we look at the persona and we're like, Oh my God, they have a lot of money. They're doing well. They're, you know, you know, they're famous. Everybody knows them. But yet, they're committing suicide. I think of um, the guy on CNN, Anthony um, Baudir. I think of Baudir. Um, I think of Kate Spade. I think of uh, Amy Winehouse. I think of all these people that had a name, but no, like, nobody to really just call them Kate, or call them Amy, or to, to not just look at the persona, but the person. And I think we need to understand that whoever you are, whether you're a leader or whether you're, you know, a mom, everybody's a person. And you kind of have to look past the persona, past the title, past all the accolades, and realize that, the, that everybody's a person and they need someone just to, um, call them by their first name and, or some someone to that they can just be themselves with that they don't have to be bishop pastor mom or you know financial manager or this i think um this title thing is seeping its way into the church and it worries me because Jesus didn't have a title. He was named Jesus and the, t and the title he had wasn't like a title, it was who he was. He was Jesus the Christ. It wasn't a first name and a last name. The Christ is who he was. Uh, Jesus was his name. It's his name. And I think that we get so caught up in titles and we lose the person. And the scary thing is, is when, you're, is when your title um, becomes who you are and you, and you bleed what you do with who you are. Um, your gifting is important. It is. It helps people. It d does some wonderful things. But it's not who you are. 
So everybody needs a place where they don't have to um, um, be their title or be a mom or be a dad or be a pastor. That they can just be them. That they can just be called by their first name. That they can just be called as a person. And, uh, and it's so unfortunate that especially for leaders, it is so hard to be that vulnerable because when you're vulnerable as a leader, it's fodder for everyone and everything. And I think that that's a place where pastors, where business leaders, where celebrities need a, a so, safe and soft place to fall. They need, everybody needs a place where they can just be themselves and work out their own issues and work out their own, own salvation and work out who they are. Because I think um, a, a, titles are wonderful, they have their place, but I think sometimes um, people hide behind their title and when you hide behind your title that becomes a problem because your title um, becomes who you are and you start living up to the title and lose the person inside inside I think many people are trying to live up to titles to expectations to personas and what the Lord is saying, I just want to call you Thomas. I just want to call you Rachel. I just want to call you Beth or whatever your name is. And sometimes we get so lost in who people, um, who we think that people want us to be that when we turn around, we've lost ourselves and I think that um, the Lord wants us to to just be who we are at all times and understand that our title our position our gifting is something that we ought to you we have to use that he gave us to use for the kingdom and not for ourselves. And I think that we've done a disservice to people because we've made people that have titles bigger than we are, but they're not, they're just people. And they have crappy marriages just like we do. They have problems just like we do. The only difference with them is it's seen and with great light comes great heat. And I think sometimes the heat, if you're not careful, can and will burn you. And I think sometimes it's burnt so many people because uh, you are who you are all the time. So if you're a um, kind person, loving person, um, giving person in the dark, you'll be that way in the light if you just stay grounded in his word and whatever. But if you're a mean, spiteful, I'll do anything to get anywhere kind of person, you'll be that way in, until God changes you. So fame only amplifies who you really are inside. I'll say that again. Fame only amplifies who you are inside. So, we, so you need somebody who can take you aside and say, listen, honey, um, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Uh, pardon the say, saying, someone who can lovingly, um, not judgingly, but lovingly take you aside and say, honey, this is not who you are. Um, I 
was watching uh, two things. I love TV shows and movies, so I'm going to make uh, a reference to one TV show and one movie. Um, I was watching A Star is Born, and for those of you who haven't seen it, I would totally recommend it for adults over 18. It's a phenomenal movie. Lady Gaga is phenomenal in it. Um, and there's a part in it where she has lost herself and she's gotten caught up in the music business because she um, worked at a restaurant and this um, this famous musician saw her and gave her the right, um, gave her, um, introduced her to the right people and basically gave her her start. But now she's um, bigger than life and now she's a celebrity and now she's like getting lost in the machine of media and performing and money. She's getting lost in the machine. And uh, there's a point where, well, she falls in love with the, with the musician guy and marries her. And there's a point in the movie um, where he takes her outside and, said, and says, look at, look at yourself. And he says something like, never, he said, never lose that, never get caught, so caught up in the fame that you lose who you are. And we sometimes, um, we sometimes get so caught up in what we do that we lose who we are. And that's what happens to a lot of people. And what makes it worse, I love social media. I really do. I'm on social media. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram, although I don't really use my Insta account. But I'm on Facebook and I'm on Twitter. Um, but people create personas to be, um, to be, um, more than what, who they truly are. So they show their picture of this happy family, this perfect house. But if you were to look behind the picture, you would see that before that picture was taken, it was basically, it, it was the kids fighting and, you know, the kids, you know, I don't want to take the picture. And the mother saying, you're going to take that picture or you're going to sit down for the rest of the afternoon or whatever. And then the kids just grudgingly, grudgingly smile and take that picture. Um, I think in, in Western society, we have an issue with trying to impress. But my question is, trying to impress who and for what reason we need to be authentically who we are we need someone uh with when everyone's calling us bishop we need someone to call us thomas we need someone uh to know who we authentically are we need someone to show who we are authentically and the first one, you should show who you are authentically is Jesus Christ. Um, I, I think a lot of us hide who we really are, thinking that maybe if people don't know, people don't know, God doesn't know, but He does, and He want, and He wants to heal the parts of you that are broken. And the persona that you're trying to get across to other people is not working because usually those other people don't care 
about your persona anyway. They they like or they scroll and then they move on. They don't even think of you for the rest of the day until they see you again. And there you're worried about, oh, do they like my picture? Do they do this or do they do that? Stop it. Stop worrying about what other people think or what other people are doing and focus on your own race. Focus on your own self. Give out when you have to. Be giving, be loving, be grateful, be, be friendly, and, and, and be open to wh when God is using you in people's lives. But don't, but don't make people your measuring stick. Make God your measuring stick, because he's the only one who can, who can measure up and exceed your expectations. He says exceedingly abundantly above mo more than all that you can ask or think or imagine. He wants to do that, but he can't do that if you're living in a persona, if you're trying to make believe you're something that you're not. And what you need to understand is we're all going through things and it may not be your addiction, it may not be your sin, but we're all going through stuff and we need to say, you know what, everything is not okay. Everything is a mess. Can you pray for me? Can you be there with me? And we need to create a place of safety in our church churches. The Bible said in a multitude of counselors, there is safety and we need to church has become the most unsafe one of the most unsafe places ever and we need to get back to where the church is a, a safe place for people to show their wounds for people to say i'm not healed i'm not okay and um, will you help me Will you pray for me? Will you walk with me? And we need to create um, spaces where it's okay not to be okay. And I think we often say we're okay because we're afraid to let people in. But we don't know when we do let people in that we're healing for ourselves being in and that's where healing for them begins. I was talking to a friend of mine about something and I'm like, thank you for, for sharing because I think of you when I think of this issue because we have an issue in common. And this person said, we'll stand together in it. And that made me feel so good. Like I wasn't alone. Like I wasn't, uh, by myself it was so good and so freeing I let myself to open up to that person and say I'm not dealing with this well so it was really good I did I did that twice once recently and once um, when I got diagnosed with diabetes and both times it was so freeing for me uh, myself to talk to this person and say, look, I'm not doing it very well. Um, we, and the fact that she said we, all, we stand together and it gave me so much hope that I wasn't alone. Because whatever you're dealing with, whether it be an addiction or whether it be whatever, you're not alone. I'll say that again. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. See, the devil's greatest device is isolation. He likes to convince us that we are the only ones dealing with this. We are the only ones going through this. And we're not. And community is a true community true authenticity, true brother and sisterhood is where 
you can come together and say, I'm not okay. I'm not okay, brother. I'm not okay, sister. And you can go through it together. Not in a judgmental way, but in a loving friendship way. And he wants us to be that way. And I'll close with a quote from John 17. He says, I pray that they all may be one, one in Christ. And when authenticity begins to happen, when the masks begin to peel off, when the, oh, it's okay, begins to stop, and when the, like, um, when the, when the whole mask begins to go, that's when you'll see people getting saved. That's when you'll see people running into the kingdom. And that's when you'll see restoration. Because a lot of people are afraid to come into the church because they're like, oh my gosh, there are a lot of perfect people in here. I've got issues. News, this is going to be news for you. They all, they all have issues, but they hide it better. But the Lord doesn't want us to hide it. The Lord wants us to come clean and be free and be whole. And wholeness is possible. Wholeness and holiness and freedom is possible. He's like, the Lord, the Lord, the Bible says, who the sun sets free is free indeed. So I just want to tell you today, the sun, if the sun set you free, you are free indeed. There is nothing that can hold you bound, nothing that can hold you hostage. And if, and if the devil is telling you that that's it for you, nobody loves you, those are lies. Don't listen to him. Go to the word. Go to your Christian brothers and sisters and go to your pastor and say, go to someone you trust and say that you're hurting. Go to someone you trust and say that you're dealing with things that you can't handle because we're all going through something and we need each other. We need each other and we belong together. Lord, I thank you for this word today. I thank you for your peace. I thank you for your joy. I thank you for your love. I thank you that even now authenticity is reigning. I thank you that even now your love is reigning. Your peace is reigning. Your joy is reigning. Thank you for all your lovely brothers and sisters that are watching this. Lord God, I pray that you permeate their hearts with this word and bring people into their lives that can call them by their first names, that they can be authentic and true with. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. And quite often you think people are judging you but they're not judging you. They're not even paying attention to you. So come forward and be real. Because people have no... Uh, people have as much say in your life as you let them have. So if you get rid of all the negative people, God himself will bring the positive people your way. Um, and I want to thank you for listening to these messages every week and, and emailing me and Facebooking me and liking and commenting. It means a lot that you've uh, respected and accepted what the Lord has put in me. I love you so much. Take care. Bye.